Good morning, Matinistas, from a grey, dull, damp and cold Manchester. I'm at Terminal 3 of Manchester's airport. You might wonder where I'm going today. Is it fun in the sun? Sophisticated continental city break? Arabian adventure? Well, no, it's none of those. It's a slightly wacky one, even by my standards. It's a guinness fueled day trip to Cork. Okay, Matanistas, I think I need to explain a bit to you what I'm actually doing today. A day trip to Cork sounds a little bit flamboyant, a little bit excessive. Well, in many ways it is, but because I'm short of time, this is the way it has to be done. So I'm going to visit as many pubs as I can and take a pint with the constraint that on the way back I can't be completely mullered to take the flight back. But I'll try and review as many pints as I can. And don't forget in Cork, it's not just Guinness, you get Beamish and Murphy's as well. Anyway, no early drinking at the airport for me. Something to line the stomach along with a cooked breakfast I had at home. So hopefully I'll be in control of myself by the end of the day. Now, I don't often fly with Ryanair, but for an hour or 35 minutes to Dublin, I think this is actually an hour and 10 to Cork, it's okay. And it's a fairly empty flight. Two empty seats next to me, what more can you ask for? I do occasionally fly with them a bit longer, but when I do that, you can actually book the seat next to you at the same price as the ticket you paid for. So if it's a dirt cheap one, it's actually not a bad idea. Anyway, I can't wait to get to Cork. Let's go. OK, Mutton Eaters, welcome to Cork. Now, whilst a lot of Guinness reviews take place in Dublin, not so many here, which is surprising, because there's not just Guinness plentifully available here. Two stouts are actually brewed here, Murphy's and Beamish, very well-known stouts. They don't seem to go down well outside this area, though. So we'll be trying a couple of those today, along with plenty of Guinness, of course, and, if we have time, a couple of independent stouts. Just had lunch here at the Riverley Hotel at the River Club. Just a little bowl of chowder and some salad, because I want to be well sustained before we start. I could have filmed the food or made part of the vlog about the food, but I thought, no, this is a beer review. So, Matanese, there's enough waffle about food. We've reached our first pub, the Shelbourne. Now, somebody told me that it's possible to get a little tasting platter with a bit of Murphy's, a bit of Beamish and a bit of Guinness. If they don't do that, I'll start with a Guinness, of course. And you might see some of this repeated between my Instagram and my YouTube videos on this tour because we're only here for a day. If I do what I did in Dublin, one pint for each social media platform, we'll only be able to go to three or four pubs because if I do more, I'll be on my arse and they won't let me on the plane. So, without any further ado, let's have that first pint. Okay, Matanistas, I am stretching over. But all of my followers on Instagram, you're going to love this challenge. I've been poured a taster of Beamish, Murphy's and Guinness without knowing which one is which. I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to get right. I'm slightly worried I'm going to get myself embarrassed here by not getting these right. It has been ages since I've had a Murphy's or a Beamish, so maybe I'll be able to identify the taste. Surely I'm going to remember how sweet Murphy's is. But anyway, this is fun. Let's give it a go. I've come in with a clean palate. 
And now number one. Now that has got flavours I'd associate more with English stouts. Obviously I'm not sure yet. I'm going to make an initial assessment and guess that that's beamish. By the way, if you come here and want to try this challenge yourself, ask for the three amigos. I know for some of you Guinness police this will be heresy because I'm not drinking a pint, but for me, I want to see how close my taste is to the actual products and whether I know what I'm tasting. Okay, quite tasty, quite refreshing, although it did have actually a bit of a coffee taste to it. Not that I mind that, of course, but number two. Now that is altogether smoother. And I think I detect that little bit of sweetness in it. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see when I taste the third glass. But I think that that may well be a Murphy's. And now on to number three. No, that's sweeter, that's sweeter. I'm going to revise my opinion here. I'm going to say number one is Beamish. Number two... I think is Guinness and number three is Murphy's but my friend Adrian is with me and he knows the answers so my friend Adrian has joined me on this little trip from Manchester shame he's on the lager but he knows which is which so how did I do number one is Beamish yes number two is Murphy's ah. and number three is Guinness ah so my original assessment was right, but then when I changed my mind, I got them slightly wrong. Very interesting that I did so. And it is actually true, if I remember correctly, Beamish is the one that has the distinct taste as, as opposed to the other two. Okay, there you are, Mutton Easters. That late change of mind was a bit of a carve, but I'm going to make up an excuse here that the lingering taste of the sweetness from glass two maybe interfered with my taste of glass three which was the Guinness. <laughs> right, Metanista's Pub 2, Shin A. Not quite sure what it means. I think somebody suggested it was and then or and next. But I don't know my Irish, so I'm not going to proclaim anything for sure. And it does have a big beamish sign, yeah, up there outside the pub. But I'm going to have Guinness here, unless I'm told I should do otherwise. Right, Mutton Easter's pub two of the day trip. I think it's pronounced Shine, and it means that's it, I just asked. Now, I wasn't sure whether to order Guinness or Beamish here. And having ordered the Guinness already, I was told that although it's the biggest seller here, they take pride in their Beamish and they think it's a better drink. So, the only solution to that is to make this a two-point stop. But here, first of all, is the Guinness. That's pretty good. If the Beamish is better than this, I'm in for a real treat. It's very smooth and creamy, not too bitter as it shouldn't be, and miles better than those mucky pints I've been having in Manchester recently. The pub itself is really beautifully appointed. Wooden panelling, very small, very cosy. Lovely place to have a quiet afternoon drink. No idea what it's like on a busy evening, but I'm here and I'm as happy as a pig in a word that I'm not allowed to mention. Well, Matanistas, I was only going to try and have one pint in each spot, but I thought at some stage I have to compare the local brews to the Guinness. And as I said earlier, the barman insisted that whilst Guinness is the most sold pint here, the locals prefer the Beamish. 
Now, Beamish is brewed here in County Cork, and the barman told me a few interesting things, really, apart from it being the preferred drink here, that all the nonsense around splitting the G with Guinness, and I keep telling you, Muttonistas, you just want to drink through the head and into the black liquid. And I'm pleased to say the barman agreed with me wholeheartedly about that, and there'll be no such thing as splitting the B here. Now, years ago, when I used to drive around Ireland, I actually really liked Beamish, but it's been ages since I had one, so given that pint of Guinness was so good and the Beamish has been recommended, I'm really looking forward to this. I think I'm getting something really tasty here. Oh yeah, that is good. That is really, really good. Ooh, I hope I can stick to my plan to drink Guinness around here. I might have to have a few more of these. It's more, shall I say, similar to an English cask stout, but it's really creamy, like a nitro stout, which of course Guinness and Murphy's are as well. So most of you are going to ask, well, Mutton, what is the difference between Guinness and Beamish? Now, they don't call Guinness a pint of plain for nothing. The coffee and chocolate notes that you should get in all stouts are very, very, very light and subtle. With Beamish, there's a slight smokiness. There's also a hint of nuts as well. I can't identify every flavour, you know, I'm not... A professional gourmet taster or anything like that but those notes I can pick up. At the end of the day Mutton Easters it's horses for courses you drink what you like. I find Murphy's a bit too sweet but either Bemis or Guinness I can drink all day and possibly will do so. Okay, Mutton Easter's coming to the end of the pint. That was delicious. I think from here on in, it's got to be one pint at each pub. Otherwise, I'm going to be of severely dubious sobriety when we go back to the airport. Okay, Mutton Easter's, three highly requested pubs, the Oval, Mutton Lane and the Castle. We just passed the Castle and we maybe should have gone in there first, but one of my followers apparently is working on the bar this afternoon here. Hope he's not clocked off because it's five o'clock, but I'm sure we'll have a great pint anyway. I'm going to stick to the Guinness here unless I'm told incredible things about the Beamish, in which case I'll go for the Beamish. Anyway, it's sure to be a great pint, I think, whatever. So many recommendations for this pub. In fact, I'll be gobsmacked and disappointed if it isn't. So, Mutton Easter's in our third pub. I have gone back to the Guinness. That point of Beamish at Cine was really, really good. But I know most of you are more familiar with Guinness, so I'll try and review Guinness where possible. This looks pretty good, and I'm hoping it's as good as you've all recommended it to be. I mean, it's poured well, the head looks good, no look of sourness about it. That is a very nice pint, that is. Is it going to be a real creamer? Well, we'll have to wait and see when we finish the pint, but it's looking good. And I have to say, it is about ten past five here. It is absolutely heaving. But I do know that Irish people traditionally like the pint after work, but I mean, what time do they finish work here? It's as if they've all been in here for an hour and a half. It's that busy. Okay, Mutton Easters, coming to the end of pint number four in pub number three. I think the Oval was a great bar. I mean, look at it here. Absolutely heaving. Tons of atmosphere. Really, really good pint. Better than I'd get in the UK. But it's not one of those exceptional creamers. Having said that, if they could stick this bar in Manchester, I'd be here virtually every day.
Right, Metanistas, pub number four, the Castle Inn. Highly requested. It looks from the outside like an old man's pub, which usually means you're going to get a smashing pint, although upstairs they seem to have a slightly more sophisticated drinking salon. And by the way, if you're from Cork, please leave some comments. Tell me, have I gone to the right places? Have I ordered the right beverage? I'm happy so far, more than satisfied. So, if you good folk from Cork tell me I've been going to the wrong places, I'll have to just come back because it's been so good so far. Now, look at this, what a pint from the Castle Inn. It looks absolutely beautiful. Head so perfect, it could possibly even feature in Debbie Does Dallas. Anyway, as always, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting or in the drinking. That is the best Guinness I've had so far on this trip. No question about it. Right, Matanistas, coming to the end of another pint. A beautiful pint in a great traditional par. I wish I could stay here all evening, but we have to move on and review other places. <laughs> Okay, Mutton Easters, pub number five, the Mutton Lane Inn, appropriately called for all as followers of me, the Prime Mutton, and again, massively requested pub here, heard great things about it. I think it's Guinness rather than Beamish or Murphy's here, but maybe I'll be stood corrected if the barman suggests that I have a stout other than Guinness. And the location is really odd. You'd think it was some quaint old lane, but it's actually just off a major shopping street in Cork. But just from looking at the outside and the people sitting at the outdoor tables, I'm expecting a bit of an atmosphere in here. <laughs> Okay, Mutton Easters, the pint at Mutton Lane. It looks good, not in a branded glass actually, which is a bit unusual. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. Head looks great. The dome, as you boys like to call it, is decent as well. And I think this is going to be a belter of a pint, simply because I see so many people ordering it here. Again, that's good. That's really, really good. I would say that the castle, oh, it's very close. It's very close. I'd put it on a par with the castle. Coming to the end of another fine pint, Matanese, there's another place that I can't help but have to drag myself away from, but we've got two more important bars to go to for quality control and research, of course. Matanistas, we are on the move tonight and we are now at pub number six, Callanans. Now, I've heard a lot of people say it's really good for Beamish, although the advertised sponsor of the pub seems to be Murphy's. So I'm just going to have to come in here and ask them what's best. Oh, and I've been informed that it is a small bar, so the filming might be very cramped, hopefully not impossible. So very much an old school pub here and rather interestingly the choice was between Beamish and Murphy's. I asked which they sold more of and the landlady or the barmaid said it's Beamish so Beamish it'll be. Right, Mutton Easters, this is something very, very interesting, something special. A pub that takes pride in its local brews. 
Guinness was not available here. It was a choice between Beamish and Murphy's. And I've gone for Beamish because I generally do prefer it. Although I think I'm being a little harsh on Murphy's by not giving it a fair crack of the whip. And if my sobriety holds up, then we might just review a Murphy's here as well. Because if we're not going to review one at a pub that doesn't serve Guinness, where are we going to do so? But first things come first, onto the Beamish. Oh yeah, that is good. That is an absolute creamer. I'm glad I came in here because although the flavours are different from Guinness, it's a stronger tasting smoky pint, this is a fantastic example of it. Okay, Matanistas, coming to the end of this pint of Beamish, and I have to say I really loved it. I mean, don't forget, it is different to Guinness if you're used to Guinness, but it's never a bad pint. It's never overly sour or bitter. I've not given Murphy's a fair crack of the whip, so I'm going to show the discipline of a chocolate fire guard and try a pint of Murphy's here. Okay, Mutton Easters, a tasty pint of Beamish. Now, some of you Murphy's fans will be screaming from the rooftop saying he hasn't had a pint of Murphy's. He hasn't had a pint of Murphy's. But here we are with a pint of Murphy's. Now, he used to be popular in the UK a while ago. I'm talking about 20 years ago, but eventually people sort of cottoned on to the fact it was a bit sweet. So you see it less often. However, having it here in its native habitat, shall we say, in County Cork, might be a different thing. And I have to say, it's not bad. It is actually pretty good. It's very smooth. Just that little bit of sweetness that puts me off, though. Of course, we are talking about a pint that is miles better than anything you'll get in Britain. And I would say, for people who are not familiar with stout or porter, this isn't a bad choice because it's light and creamy. And I will admit, this is actually one of the best examples I've been served. Okay, Mutton Easters, uh, another pint coming towards its end, and we have one more pub to go to. Somewhere unusually in the island, that's an independent craft brewery. I'm really looking forward to it, but just to go back to where we are at Kellanans, even though it's not my choice of stouts, this has probably been the best pint of Murphy's I can remember ever having. <laughs> Okay, Mutton Easters, final stop on this mini tour of Cork, Franciscan Well Brew Pub. Now, in Ireland, most pubs are tied mainly to Guinness, but to an extent to Murphy's and Beamish as well. Not tied in the English sense, but here we have an independent brew pub. Very, very rare in Ireland, so we need to check it out. Okay, Mutton Easters at the Franciscan Well, and the stout was called Shandon Stout. No idea what that refers to, but so many people have told me this is such a great place to have an independent Irish stout that I have to go with that recommendation. So let's head off to the Snug and check it out. Okay, Mutton Easters at the Franciscan Well. Independent brewery, although somebody did tell me that Coors took them over, but they're still selling their own craft beer. No idea what to make of it, so I just had to read the tasting notes online, and I was informed as such that there are heavy hints of chocolate here. Some roasted barley, a little bit of coffee, but let's see. That's really good, that is really, really good. It's very light and it's not got any really heavy flavours. In fact, in many ways, it's the polar opposite of an English stout, which has pronounced coffee flavours. But I like this. Okay, it's not as good as the best pint of Guinness, but it's still a pretty good bet. And I have to say, I just didn't realise that there was a lot of Irish craft brewing out there because I'm too used to pubs being tied or represented by Guinness or here Murphy's or Beamish.
OK Matanistas, performing a little bit better than I thought I would. This is my ninth pint that we're coming to a close of, and we're going to have to call it a day unless we get a cheeky one at the airport because our flight is at 20 past 10, it's half eight, we're still in the centre of court. We have to go back. My sobriety is holding up reasonably well. We better head to the airport. I'll wrap up the video there, either with a pint or without a pint. Okay, Matanisas, just the nine and a half pints in, we have to just persuade the security staff that we are not completely mothered. Otherwise, we're going to have to spend the night in Cork. If we get through, we'll give you an airport pint review. Okay, Matanistas, time to end the day trip to Cork. I'm at the airport bar in the departures area of Cork Airport, and the bar is called Craft Lane. We got here at about nine, just before nine, an hour and a bit before our departure, and thankfully Manchester just happened to be the last departure of the evening. And although they're still serving drinks, they've stopped serving food, but it doesn't matter because we all know Guinness is pretty nourishing. Is this as good a pint as at Dublin Airport? Well, I have to say I'm doubtful because that was incredibly good, surprisingly good, and I expect this just to be a normal pint. But having said that, there are so many people drinking at this bar that it might well be quite good. Okay, it is actually, it is pretty good. Not as good as Dublin Airport, but it's still pretty good. But given we have 45 minutes to go, I think maybe I have to try the Beamish or the Murphys, just to be fair, and give the airport some proper quality control. Right, Matanistas, a bonus one for you the last point of my day trip to Cork. An irresponsible day trip to Cork, possibly, where I'm now ten and a half pints in and this is my eleven. Anyway, we have to finish with a creamy beamy, the local brew. The airport Guinness was okay, not as good as Dublin, so I'm expecting great things of the local brew at its local airport. I must admit, at the airport bar, most people seem to be on Magnus or other things, but there are a few people on Stout. Hey, that's actually quite good, that is. Again, the Guinness at Dublin Airport really is something special, but in terms of the Beamish I've had, not the best, but it's still okay. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the vlog, Matanistas. I've got to go to Newcastle to vlog the city game tomorrow. Might not be match fit or in the best shape, but I'll produce a good vlog for you anyway. I'm going to have to love you and leave you, of course. Had a great day out in Cork. 11 and a half pints, pure fun, pure joy. And if you like my videos, it's very important that you please like the videos because if you like the videos, I get pushed up the algorithm. Remember to please share as well to all your friends. And of course, subscribe and hit the bell button so you know exactly when my next video is coming out. And of course, Metanistas, there is one thing absolutely that you cannot forget. And of course, that is that you can't beat a bit of mutton.